No one has ever asked the question, what happens when you come out a Storm Chaser, a Filmmaker, and a Dodge Ram 3500? Well, we've got the answer, and it's this. In this video, I'm going to conduct an interview with the TF2 captain and CEO of Storm of Passion, Ryan Shepard. Ryan Shepard had the courtesy of offering me a 30 minute interview for any questions that I may have, and I went around asking my friends, who I knew pretty closely, if they had any questions on TF2, and those will all be answered in this video, courtesy of Ryan Shepard. So thank you, Ryan and Storm of Passion, for allowing this to happen. Now on with the interview. Well, I'm Ryan Shepard. I'm the CEO of Storm of Passion and uh, the captain of the Tornado Intercept Vehicle, too. Okay. Um, how and why did you acquire TIF2, and what was the whole process behind it, you know, getting it in general? Yeah, I, back in 2019, I saw Sean post on the internet that he was going to do a scavenger hunt to give away TIV1 for free for whoever could find it. And uh, so I participated in that because I wanted to try to get the vehicle. I was looking around on Google satellite, trying to see where it might be. And I actually uh, drove the TIV one for Sean back in the past. So that's why I wanted to uh, acquire it and maybe fix it up and use it again. Um, but since I didn't win the scavenger hunt, uh, someone else ended up finding it. I called up Sean the next day and asked him if he, he was interested in selling the TIV too, because I thought maybe if he was getting rid of them, then he was still trying to figure out what to do with TIV two. And it turned out that he had already posted it on Craigslist that same day <laughs> uh, for sale. So I told him I was seriously inter interested in the TIV two, and uh, we we drew up a contract and I purchased it from Sean. So. Uh... A bit of extra behind that. Um, tip two, is it just like, could you be able to drive it or was it like in that city disappear where you just couldn't? Uh, tip one or? No, two. Oh, tip two. Yeah. Okay. So after I purchased the tornado intercept vehicle from Sean, it, he said it was out in Illinois in a farm. It had been stored there for oh, a few Lord. years. <laughs> It actually, it, it was stored in a barn on this farm for a couple of years. And then the the farm changed ownership. And so the new owner drug it outside in the farm field. And so it sat there for a couple more years out in the sun. And the no, oven. no. Yeah, the mice were getting to it and uh, chewing up all the wires and building nests in it. It was nasty. So um i didn't know if it was quite sure if it was able to run or even drive when i got out there i just flew out there just to kind of assess the situation uh the farmer um, met me at his gate unlocked the gate let me in took me over to the tiv and they apparently already had the key too so we tried starting it up it started right up uh, yeah it I mean, those diesel engines man they <laughs> Cummins, robust man. <laughs> But I mean, it had plenty of other issues. Um, uh, the frame was in certain areas were just hanging by a thread, like just very thin welds. And it looked like it might just fall apart on the way back. So I was going to bring it back to Colorado. Remind you of something? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was, it was, it looked like it was hanging on by a thread and I had to, to drive that all the way back to Colorado. I decided to just go ahead and try it that night. It was really cold. 
I got pulled over in every state along the way because <laughs> I didn't have a plate or anything. Oh Lord! And some of them didn't know what it was. Uh, an Illinois state trooper told me was I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> All right. Uh, how was it restored, and how difficult was that? Because I assume from what you said, that was probably a bit of been pretty dang hard. Yeah. So we've actually the. Yeah. So actually the restoration process has been an ongoing thing since 2019. Uh, a friend of mine, James Breitenbach, he has a farm out in Kansas and a shop there. That's where we store it. So it keep it out of the elements and stuff. But we also have a few more friends, uh, like three or four mechanics that work at, a sh at another shop just down the road from him. And there are actually our, our full-time mechanics on it. Um, They've been working on it for three or four years now, doing welding work on the frame, replacing the whole drivetrain. We just recently did the transmission, a transfer case. Uh, they're redoing all the suspension. Most of the engine has been fine. Uh, just about everything else in the vehicle has been replaced or redone. The, the whole electrical system had to be redone. Uh, so it's been a, a heck of a process and a pretty expensive one, but uh, we're that. actually making it better than it was originally so that's the kind of the exciting yeah, it certainly looks better <laughs> Thank I, mean, you. I like the new one yeah well, that's good to hear but uh also little thing on here um what about the actual like the hydraulics how how was that i'm sure that would have probably been like fried you know the, the hydraulics actually surprisingly were the system itself was okay the uh the cylinders had to be rebuilt they were leaking quite a bit when I first picked up the vehicle, it was just after, spraying. Yeah, it was just dripping out the back. I had to do some attach some metal strips on it just to hold the spikes in so they wouldn't fall out while I was driving. <laughs> yeah. I remember it's like, how do you get the spikes? And I'm like, I don't think you can just go and buy them. I think you have to build them. Yeah. 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 We took them to a cylinder shop that specifically does that and they rebuilt a few of them. But the uh, the pump and the the lines are still good and uh, everything else is working on it just fine. All right. Uh, how are they maintained right now? How's the not, not just the spikes, but yeah, just the tip two is like a, as a general, the vehicle. So. Yeah. James Breitenbach, he's also our president of Storm of Passion. Um, he's the lead mechanic. Uh, he's been in charge of the engineering on it and the electrical engineering. But he also coordinates all the maintenance with the, all the other mechanics as well. Um, so we'll come up with ideas together on to improve a system or a part and or replace a part. And then we'll bring it down over to the mechanic shop down the road in Kansas and they'll, they'll work on that. They actually have a, a semi lift. It, it takes a special lift to lift that much weight, 14,000 yeah. pounds. So it takes a semi lift to lift that up. You can't just use a normal vehicle lift. So, or jacks. <laughs> yeah. So, how is the current one like different than, you know, whenever they first built it? Obviously, they made you know first it was just flaps and then went with the hydraulics. How is this one different? Like, how'd you change, if anything? Well, it's if anything, Tip Two is better than it was originally because we've improved a lot of the strength on. Uh, like frame and suspension. Uh, the, re the rear end was falling apart before. Uh, every time we took a turn, all that weight in the back would put so much strain on the rear track bar and it would snap. Oh, and Lord. The whole rear end would shift off of the suspension and then fall on the airbags. It would tear airbags up and tires up. Uh, that happened a few times to us. So we had to, to re-strengthen some of those parts, put in better ones, you know, and do some better welding down there and they've done a tremendous job on the vehicle and it's it feels pretty solid now it drives smooth better be yeah <laughs> and right, with the, uh, it's a diesel as you know the cummins it it's going to last a long time for the engine. engine but you've got uh i know people like well let's just steal it. like certainly there's more than just steel plating there's got to be stuff in between that right yeah there's actually in the armor package it's there's a seven layers of what? rubber, steel, aluminum, Kevlar. So there's actual Kevlar layers meshed in yeah, between. That's pricey. Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, that's really to pr 
protect yourself from high speed projectiles. Even small stuff could like at a high enough speed could penetrate armor. Yeah, Cause I remember seeing like one of the, uh, it was that EF4 or somewhere. I think it was in Missouri or Kansas. Um, one part of the video, like a rock hit the windshield. and it like created a whole spark and bird mark yeah yeah and uh brandon's intercept video yep yeah something hit the windshield there and caused a spark that was pretty impressive <laughs> yeah. that's that's the reason why we got kevlar in the meshed in the armor too so uh how do you deploy anyway like you just click a button or because it sounds like a long, it looks like a long process so yeah, it's actually the so deployment process. Up. Yeah, the deployment process is actually a a process we have to train on and train our drivers on because it's I mean, it's not just a one push button and it all one two and, three. Yeah. <laughs> There's actually a series of about six levers that you have to pull in a certain order. Um, Are they a label? Uh, yeah, they're they're late, they're numbered. So uh, right now we've we finally set it up one through six, so it's the correct order. Before, when Sean had it, he had, you know, you'd have to push down one and then push down four and then push down two and then push down six. And it was, it was all funky, but um, the pump can't handle putting down all the hydraulics at once. So that's why we have a certain order of things to go down at a time and then we'll go to the next one. And that's um, why people will hate on tip because you're like, well, I'm just like dawn three, you click a button and like three seconds you're down. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's fair, I guess. Yeah, the difference there is uh, uh, Tiv 2 is actually a high clearance vehicle, an off road four by four four wheel drive vehicle, and it, it needs a lot for. of clearance. So we bring those flaps up so we have, you know, we can drive over some rough terrain uh, where Dom 3 couldn't do some of that stuff. And we still, we also have airbags on on the Tiv 2, just like the Dom 3 does. So we can drop those airbags, but then we can even lower all the flaps down further. So we can keep that so, clearance when we yeah. need it. And then but what about the back? I've always noticed like the back is just two spikes. So what's stopping wind from just getting under there and whoosh, bye bye Tiv? Well, it's it's not as good as when we had the retracting flap before, but it uh, there is a permanent welded flap in the back that does cover most of it. There is a little bit of a gap there, but it's I we think it's not enough to cause a lift. All right. Uh Storm of Passion. Um where did, where did it even come from? Because I remember it just yeah, Tiff 2, these guys are building it now. Yeah, so Storm of Passion is basically just the organization of the people that were already involved in maintaining and operating the TIV. So I'm the CEO of the company and then James Breitenbach, who was the lead mechanic, he's also now the president of the company. So uh, he helps. He's like my second guy and my right hand guy for everything. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't just do maintenance. He's he runs the doghouse. He does the support vehicle. He does Wait, the doghouse engineering. Yeah, he's the I dog thought the doghouse is... doesn't exist anymore. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it it's always a necessity with Tib two to have a support vehicle because one, it's uncomfortable to be in it all the time because it doesn't have air conditioning or yeah but like i remember i it might have been just be hearing stuff but like the original like ram dog house is that the same one or is this just like a different sport vehicle yeah this is just a different vehicle we're actually in the third version of our of our own dog house um we just converted a old police interceptor a ford oh lord oh yeah, yeah. i remember seeing something about that yeah we've actually got a uh... facebook group called dog house 3.0 so you can follow the track on that yeah, I probably will actually. Um, that's something. All right. Uh, what are the plans for the future of it? Like any improvements? You kind of get new vehicles. You kind of get to one. <laughs> Convince yeah, that guy. Like, hey, we've got quite a few people on on board on Storm and Passion now. So we've got um, a vice president. We've got people in charge of the crew. Uh, communications and media and media production. So we spend a lot of time just developing content, content creation. That's our favorite thing. Um, so we're big on media creation, uh, filming. So we want to get out and do multiple camera angles of an intercept. We want to get all kinds of GoPro angles and 360 stuff and uh, just oh, yeah, a lot of stuff that hasn't been done before. So, so what's in the turret now? The turret was designed for a giant 90 pound IMAX camera, but now 
we don't yeah, quite we don't need, need that. that much space. Uh, it's still useful, but we're going to probably just mount, you know, a DSLR in there. Or, uh, maybe at some times we'll bring in a, a more professional like red or something. That's what I was about to say. Like, mm. just run out a red camera if, if storm season's coming out. Yeah. It's like, just hey, give it to us like for four months. Yeah. <laughs> we'll bring it back hopefully in one piece if the turret does its job. So. Yeah, certainly we'd like to develop more relationships with brands and uh, um, do some more science and data collection too in the future. It's like, I don't think there's ever been like an 8K video on Sun of Tornado before, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we definitely want to get a lot more digital camera angles in an intercept this time. All right. Uh, how did you get into storm chasing? I started storm chasing 18 years ago with my college roommate. He was a meteorologist. And he got, he asked me to come along with him one time and I just got hooked. <laughs> so I started doing it, uh, for the, you know, with him for the next seven years. And during that time, I also, that's when I met Sean and the discovery guys and ended up working with them. I met another guy named Roger Hill. He's been running a storm chasing tour for the last few decades. And he holds a Guinness world record for the most tornadoes seen by one human being. So I've learned from some Take really incredible record. people. <laughs> all right uh well, let's do you know any other chasers well obviously just answer that question but like anybody in specific do you have active communication with others do you work together with others how does that work we don't really do a lot of work with other chasers but we we do know them and we were friends with a lot of them um, we're actually friends with reed believe it or not people people think that we have a feud between each other but it's kind of just oh, a no, too, competitive too. one <laughs> but most of the time we're we're friendly with them um but we have people that we see constantly out in the field, all, you know, all spring that we we get to know pretty well. So um, this is actually one that somebody asked me to ask you. Tiv two or Dom three? No bias. <laughs> Tiv two for sure. Even Reed says that. That's the funny thing, because uh, yeah, because I remember seeing the face like, yeah, I trust this thing in the DF five, and I'm like, yeah. Then why'd you build Dom three? <laughs> yeah, I That's think seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. I think it's yeah, it's Chip 2 is an, a truly armored vehicle, whereas um Dom 3 probably could have used a little better armor package on it. No, I think it's mainly just chemical layers on Dom 3. And I like the the clearance and the four by four uh capability of Tip 2 still better than Dom 3. Just the I'm pretty sure Dom does have four wheel drive, right? Yeah, I think it does. Uh it's just the clearance and the the suspension and stuff. I, the, our chassis and Vehicles just designed better for off-road stuff. So, oh yeah, because I think wouldn't Sean just get tired of the tip getting stuck, and he's like, "Screw it." Yeah, <laughs> and then another he just one built this monster at four by four. Then abandoned tip one. Yeah, that's that was the reason. The main reason he went from tip one to tip two is because he needed more clearance and four four wheel drive. So, I don't on those dirt roads. Like, mean, why do you make tip one like that? Yeah, he didn't quite think that one through when he first started. It's like, like, well, we need low, we need low ground clearance to make sure. I remember seeing something like he was saying, like, we need low ground clearance so we don't get lifted, which is common sense. But like, yeah, he did that, but no, he didn't. I think he was surprised at how much storm chasing is on done on dirt roads. <laughs> okay, um, what's the most intense weather? Not even necessarily a tornado, just weather in general. You've been, you personally been in. Well, that's a that's a tough one um all of it <laughs> yeah uh i've seen one ef5 uh that was really? near piedmont oklahoma and it was mostly a rain wrap tornado so it was kind of hard to see but it was a massive wedge just all you saw was the whole rain curtain rotating on the ground so that was probably the most violent one that i had been around um i've also been hit by a tornado in a non-armored vehicle in a passenger van uh two yeah, of them quite the downgrade yeah two of them got flipped behind me and then our vehicle stayed up but uh i was dodging a bunch of debris from a barn so <laughs> that was intense too have you ever heard of packing up like <laughs> i i want to know how did you get in that situation well it was uh we were watching uh, the main circulation on what ended up being an EF4 tornado in Lawrence, oh. uh, Linwood, Kansas. And okay. we we turned away from that and we were going south away from it. And then 
within embedded in a high precept environment, uh, another tornado formed. And it's, it's a very unusual area within an art rear flank downdraft. We've done, we've gone through an RFD like that a thousand times and never had an issue. This one time uh, there was a tornado there and it was small and it just hit at the right place. Like it was, if, if it could probably have gone between our vans. That's how small the tornado was. Uh, speaking of that, I remember this place I'm in right now actually was hit by a tornado. Um, but I think nobody says it is, but like I specifically remember I woke up because I was it was a nighttime one, which is I hate those. But yeah, I woke up and then the very... then the power goes out. I'm like, okay, that's great. And then just a whole bunch of wind. No, the sirens went on like after, which for some reason I know it's weird, but like yeah, for some reason there was a whole bunch of wind, and then uh. The next day, everything was like, it wasn't all in one place, like straight line. It was spread. And I'm like, okay, put that together. Like, well, it was just wind. I'm like, that was not wind. <laughs> that, there's no way. Yeah, nighttime tornadoes are pretty eerie. They look bigger. You can't quite tell where it's at. <laughs> it's pretty eerie. So, uh, is Tiff, too, about the, like, the, I remember seeing the, that screen on it. How long has that been there? The uh, what what is which one the is the screen it? on the tip? Dude, just like the one that has a clock on it. So, oh yeah, the, the little LCD screen that's actually got a CD player in it still, or a DVD player. That's got to be stock. <laughs> yeah, just if you want to load maps on it, you have to put the DVD in. <laughs> it's pretty old. What's what's stopping y'all from just getting a just putting one in there and it's designed to do stuff like a laptop or something? Yeah, we want to take that screen out and actually put a a rear uh camera facing rear facing camera so we can see better when we're backing up or just behind us in general like a rear view you'd have to custom made that though with a like a polycarb or something so you don't break yeah it. james is pretty good he's he's a little engineer electrical engineer so he can do that i don't know any well i guess you come up with ideas could, all the time only way i do it is i don't I don't do it the normal way. I just find a way to make an HDMI cable work with the reverse. I'd find yeah. a way. But, yeah. Uh, we want to keep it on all the time, too, and use it like a rear view mirror. We also want to put some kind of air conditioning in it at some point, <laughs> especially if we're going to have... Did it ever come with air conditioning? Guess. No, it, the, uh, the position of the hydraulic PTO is where the air conditioner is, was, so... We don't, we haven't had air conditioning ever since the hydraulics got put in it. Which was whenever they bought. Well, yeah, no, pretty much right when they started. Good when they started, there were no hydraulics. It was just let go. Yeah, when they started with the hydraulic flap system, yeah, and the spikes. That's when they took the air conditioning out and the PTO in. So it's in the same spot. So uh, about the, what goes into the process of, like deploying it? Like, what's the first thing you do? Have you ever deployed it yourself? Yeah, actually, uh, the deployment process starts with. What am I saying? Of course, you have. We 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 let out the air from the airbags. So there's two release valves that we push, and all the vehicle drops down first. That yeah, way, you get lower to start out, and then then all the hydraulic flaps go down, and then the spikes. Yeah, we deployed twice last year in 2023, uh, once in Oklahoma for a tornado and another time in Kim, Colorado. Both were kind of weaker developing type tornadoes. They weren't condensed fully and violent, but. So what's the maximum amount of when you think TIB2 could theoretically handle? Just I'm, I'm keywording on theoretically here. Well, it's record right now is 175 miles an hour, and that was in Brandon, Herb, and Sean's intercept in 2013. Uh, but I, th some of us have been talking about it, and we think that we can probably get to closer to 200, maybe not much more than like 215 or something like that. <laughs> we probably don't oh, want to push it. I mean, yeah, because this isn't the spike would start to bend. Yeah, and well, the other problem in tornadoes is it's not just you know, crosswind. You also it's, have an upward motion, kind of a suction. You get these little suction vortices that pull up a lot of upward motion and they, and once you get past 215 miles an hour anyway, then you're, you know, things start getting ripped out of the ground. So 
it's, it's something we don't want to play around with and too much higher than that. Uh, of course, you're kind of just rolling the dice when you intercept a tornado anyway, because you don't quite know what you're going to be facing it. So it's it's a really hard judgment call to decide, is this tornado going to be too strong or is it going to be weak enough that we can go ahead and intercept it? So um, a lot of people have been asking this. What about what's Sean doing now? Did he just like leave? Just yeah, so Sean, what hasn't been chasing as much because he he was a filmmaker, right? So he's yeah not just done storm chasing. He's done a lot of other things, um, natural disasters and icebergs, and he's done fires, wildfire stuff. That was he was doing that for a little while. Um, but he's actually, I mean, he still has a heart for storms and what, severe weather. So like once in a while, he'll come out and chase still on his own. Um, he did last year for a couple times. He built a, a little armored Subaru and put some spikes on it and went out for a couple of chases. Did last you ever time. actually see the Subaru? Yeah, actually, he ended really? up driving in front of the Tib 2 a couple of times. <laughs> so I bet that was pretty eerie to see his vehicle behind him. Does it? How does it? Uh, how does that Subaru work with spikes? I, I you know, I don't really know. Um, it probably I remember it still hold it in place, it, but I, I remember him saying in an interview he wanted like a small lightweight thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it's, he got. What he asked for. I don't know if he'd want to go inside a tornado with it, but <laughs> yeah, it probably hold him in place a little bit better. Until flip. Yeah, because <laughs> there's no airbags. Uh, that's the end of the document. So I don't know what else to say. We'd like to get Sean back in the TIV at some point soon. Uh, I was going to ask him and Brandon if they wanted to go on a chase with me sometime. Uh, Brandon starts his tours on. A, a oh, that gets so many, so many people just like, he's back. He's yeah. Back. Yeah. We want to break the internet and get Sean and Brandon back in for a chase. That'd do it too. <laughs> be fun. So, um, what's actually, somebody actually asked me this to ask you, um, Obviously, not everybody has a giant armored vehicle at their disposal. So, what if they want to chase, but they can't actually go chase? What's the best thing? Like, obviously, I'm making like a game here, but what's the best one that you think exists right now? Well, you know, before we were trying to get into tornadoes, my, one of my favorite things to do is actually get far back from the storm, so you can see all the structure. You get really incredible lightning shots with the the supercell. Yeah. Uh, so there's all kinds of different strategies other than getting close to the tornado, you know, and there's um, there's ways of even getting close to a tornado, but staying out of its way and, you know, letting the path cross in front of you and not get hit by it. So you, you can still have a really exciting chase experience without an armored vehicle. It's just it kind of adds to your capability a little bit more, maybe just having that. So what about, you know, virtual storm chasing? What's your what's your take on that well you know the great thing about that is it's free so you can you can also teach yourself on how to read weather models really well that way you can sit at home and make your forecast say i want this area um, you can do that every day so you can hone in on your skills and maybe one day you want to start doing a lot more chasing you know on your own then you're ready you're more prepared for it you can get in more success out of it so you can make your money more efficient at that point so um, have you ever done like just virtual? Yeah, all the time. Uh, if I can't make it out to a chase, uh, maybe I've got other commitments or I have to go to work the next day. You know, sometimes I can't make it out to a chase. So absolutely, I'm at home on radar, um, looking at mo models and making my decisions at home. This is where I would drive if I was going out there you know, and then see what happens. Watch live streams. It's almost a lot like of games there. out there too, actually. Yeah, yeah. We've been messing around and roblox twisted a lot lately and yeah pretty sure like the best form chasing game out there is a roblox game yeah <laughs> and it's yeah, not that bad we've become pretty good friends with the developers and they they keep improving the vehicle for us and the uh, aesthetics yeah, of the tip i noticed <laughs> do y'all get like early access to that or something yeah we're actually in that part of their tester program too so we get to kind of see this stuff they're working on so that's fun oh wow All right, I think that, that pretty much ends it right there. 
and just like that the interview is coming to an end this is present me not the me that was in the interview i want to give a special thanks to storm passion and ryan shepherd for making this happen and if y'all have any questions for me to ask them maybe in another interview go ahead and put them down in the comments uh storm passion thank you ryan shepherd thank you i appreciate all the footage you guys have sent me and thank you very much and i'll catch y'all in the next one this is Aviation Doge, signing off.